Welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I am so happy that you are here with me today for another Masterpiece Monday. Today we will be talking about the artist Thomas Sully and we'll also be learning how to draw portraits. It might be a little different than you first think. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Below each video, make sure to click the thumbs up. And if you like what you're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you very much. Okay, now moving on to Thomas Sully. So he was born in 1783 in Horncastle, Lincolnshire, England. But at a very young age, he, with his family, moved to the United States and he spent most of his life in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He became a professional painter at the age of 18 and many of his subjects were political leaders of the time. He painted Thomas Jefferson, John Quincy Adams, and Andrew Jackson in a famous painting that I'm sure that you recognize. If you look at the $20 bill, you are looking at Thomas Sully's work. That is a picture he painted of Andrew Jackson. Thomas Sully's records indicate that he painted 2,631 paintings in his lifetime. And we are going to be able to use one of those many, many paintings called the Torn Hat to learn how to draw portraits or people. So in order to do this project, you will need a few supplies. You will need some colored pencils, and you will also need a pencil, a regular pencil with an eraser. You will need a glue stick, a pair of scissors, and then two pieces of regular sized construction paper. So this is nine inches by 12 inches. I will be using the white here to draw the face so that you can see my drawings, and then I will be using purple for the hat. It is up to you whatever colors you want to use for this project. So let's get started. All right, the first thing that I am going to do is I am going to take my white piece of paper, the paper that I am using for the face, and I am going to fold it in half. I'm folding first like a hamburger, and then I am going to unfold that, and then I'm going to fold it like a hot dog. This is just going to give us our guidelines for drawing the face. All right, then I'm going to open it up, and I am going to take my pencil with an eraser, and I am going to draw an oval on this piece of paper, and I am going to try to make the oval get as close to the edges of the paper at the folds as I can. So I'm just going to draw a great big egg, right? All right, that looks pretty good. So this is the outline of my face. And now I am going to draw the eyes. What I think might surprise you is how low I draw the eyes. I am going to use the center fold for my guideline and that is where I am going to draw my eyes. So I am going to draw one half of the eyes above the line and one half below just like that. One half above and one half below. This is one of those things that really um, trips up people as they learn how to draw portraits. What we don't realize when we look at people's faces is that their eyes really are in the middle of their head. So many people start drawing them up in the middle of a forehead because they just don't stop and realize that our eyes are just in the middle. All right, so now I have my eyes drawn and now I am going to draw kind of like a U for the iris of the eye. The iris is the colored part of an eye. Then I'll draw my pupils in in the center, just like that. And now I am going to draw the nose. So the nose should be halfway between the bottom of the eye and the bottom of the oval, which is also the chin. Now I'm going to draw only one side and the bottom of the nose. So I am going to just kind of go like that and like that. You can draw it any shape that you want. In fact, I think I'm going to shorten this just a little bit. There we go. And that looks like my nose. Now, between the bottom of my nose and the chin, I am going to draw the lips. So the lips should extend um, lengthwise the same distance as the pupils. So I'm going to kind of draw an imaginary line 
width down from my pupil and then I am going to draw the top lip and then I am going to continue it until I get to the other imaginary line just straight down from the pupil. So that is, those are the edges of my top lip. Then I'm going to draw in the bottom lip and then I am going to kind of draw a line between the two and there we go, we have our lips. So this is a pretty well-proportioned face. It doesn't quite look like probably what you imagined, does it? All right, so then I am going to go ahead and cut out the face just along the line, the oval line that I drew. My scissors are sticking for some reason. I must have had them in glue, <laughs> in some glue stick, glue. All right, so I'm just cutting along the outside of the face, and I am going to save my scraps because I am going to use those to put on the boy's ears in just a minute. All right, so there I have my face. Now, I have to tell you, after I've cut it out, I see that my oval wasn't incredibly symmetric. So I am going to also take my scissors, and I am just going to cut a little bit off of this side to kind of get that little big, that little big, that little bump out that I had. All right, there we go. So that is the face. Now my boy needs ears, right? So I am going to take these scraps right here that I have of the, um, the paper that I just cut out, and I'm going to find the biggest ones. I think those are the biggest ones. And then I'm going to just get rid of the rest after I kind of fold up the two triangles that I think are the biggest that are left over. And now I am going to draw the ears. Now to do that, I am going to look at the boy's irises and I am going to take about that size of a circle as the bottom part of my ear. So I am going to take, I'm going to try to draw a circle that's about this size down here at the bottom of my uh, my white paper. Then I am going to draw a bigger circle above it. It should be probably, you know, I don't know, is that twice as much? Look at that relative, the circles relative to each other and draw something similar to that. Now I, oh, you know, and before I go on, I am drawing a little bit darker than I would recommend that you do. I would be using whisper lines. What do you think a whisper line is? If you think of a whisper line, it probably is very light, right? So I would be using whisper lines here, but I'm drawing a little darker so that you can see, but you should be using your whisper lines because whisper lines are easy to erase. These are guidelines. You will be drawing darker lines in here too, but you're just going to be using these circles as guidelines. So whisper line circles, and then a whisper line connection point, and a whisper line connection point here too. Do you see how that already kind of looks like an ear? Okay, now, still with whisper lines, we're going to draw a circle inside the big circle and a circle right kind of between your biggest circle and that first circle that you drew. Still whisper lines. Okay, now, still whisper lines, we're going to connect those two circles that you just drew. All right, now, not using whisper lines, you get to kind of get loose and draw in what an ear actually looks like. You can look in a mirror at your ear for help, or you can look at a parent's ear or a sibling's ear or someone around you's ear. If there's no one around you that will let you use their ear as a model, you can go to um, an image search and look up ears online. All right, so now you're going to kind of draw in the details of the ear. So the way that I kind of do that is I kind of draw this I don't know what it looks like. Kind of like a bean with a hump or the top of a heart with a really long line attached. I don't know. So you see that. And then I am going to kind of trace this, this circle that I'm drawing around right now and kind of go around, make that um, very long and noticeable. And then I am going to outline the ear, just not completely around, just kind of on this right side and then just around those curves just a little bit. And then I am going to take my eraser and I am going to erase all of those whisper lines 
that I first drew. So all of my guidelines should be erased. And like I said, your guidelines will erase easier if you use actual whisper lines. And what you are left with then looks like an ear. Oops, wow, it went right off the table. But don't you think that looks like an ear? All right, so now you can cut out, and if you're cutting both pieces of paper at once, you're going to cut one ear and get two. All right, so I'm cutting out where that first guideline was so that I know the edge of my ear, and look, now I have two ears. So I am going to take the bottom ear that I haven't drawn on, and I am going to flip it over, and then I am going to reverse the lines that I just drew and do it again on this one. So you can use your guidelines again. You can draw your circles and your lines if you would like, or if you can use this just as a guide, you can just draw them in without the guidelines. It's up to you. It's your call because, like I say so many times, it is your art. All right, so I'm just continuing around here, just kind of at the edge. That outlining is a little hard, but there we go. And I have my boy's two ears. Once I have his two ears, I can go ahead and glue them on. And I'm going to look here at my reference point. You kind of see that the ears go kind of in the middle of the eyes. So that's where I am going to glue my boy's ears on. So just a little bit of glue, and I'll stick them right there next to, well not next to his eyes, but in line with his eyes, right? Okay. I think that if you look at that, you will notice that he looks relatively human, right? Even though his eyes are in the middle of his head, or maybe because his eyes are in the middle of his head, he's starting to look rather realistic. All right, then you get to draw in the hair. So the way that I drew in this hair was I just looked at the original and I kind of eyeballed it and drew it similarly to Thomas Sully's. So I just kind of started, um, I took my pencil and I just kind of started drawing some triangles because that kind of looks like bangs. It doesn't look like the boy has like just brushed his hair. Maybe he's been out playing a little bit. And so his hair is a little bit disheveled maybe, not in a bad way, but just kind of a little bit unkempt. All right, so I drew across his forehead. So these, this will be kind of his bang area. And then I'm also going to draw down, here I'm going to move, let me show you this. I'm gonna move the hat. And I'm also going to draw down here and kind of give him a couple sideburns. So using this for reference, I'm going to just kind of draw a, a semicircle or a curved line here. And then I'll kind of go up. And there we go. And then I will do the same thing over on this side. Draw kind of a curved line and then straight and then kind of up to give him those sideburns. All right, and then once you have that done, you can color in his hair and his sideburns. And of course, if you are doing this at home, you can use whatever color you would like. I'm kind of trying to go along with Thomas Sully's work, kind of trying to replicate it, not directly, of course, but just kind of trying to use it as my reference. But of course, you can do whatever you want. You could make this a self-portrait if you wanted. You could make the boy a girl. You could give him or her blonde hair or black hair, any purple hair if you wanted, right? Your art, which is so cool because you get to do whatever you want, whatever makes your heart sing, because art should definitely make your heart sing when you do it. All right, I am not taking the most care as I color this because I'm trying to go quickly but I am trying to at least get my strokes going the same way. Coloring seems to look better when you go the same way with your strokes. Do remember that if you are putting a hat on your boy or your girl, a lot of this hair won't be seen, so um, you don't necessarily have to completely cover the head where the hat will be, but I will at least give it just a little bit of color. 
going the same way. All right, look, I'm almost done. There we go, color in that last sideburn. And there we go, we have our boy. All right, so now I am going to draw and cut his hat. So this is where artistic license truly comes in. So you get to decide which way you want his hat to be or her hat to be. Do you want it straight on top of the head? Do you want it kind of cocked jauntily? Do you want a pointed hat? You could do a pointed hat. I'm still going to stick with Thomas Sully's shape, or at least mostly stick with the shape. And so the way that I am going to draw the hat so that I know that I have the right size is I am going to actually put the paper that I'm using for my hat right on top of my boy. And then I am going to use, I think maybe I'll actually use Thomas Sully's art here for reference. And I am going to see that it comes out here a little bit past his head. So as much as I can, I am going to make his hat come out a little past his head. And I know this is probably hard for you to see. What I want you to know though, is that there are no lines here that can't be drawn over. So I am going to just kind of keep drawing until I find a shape that I am happy with. And I, you know, erasers were made for reasons. You can erase if you decide you don't like the shape. You can redraw, you know what, you can even flip the paper over if you decide that whatever you drew was not exactly what you were envisioning. I hope that you can see that. That kind of looks like a top hat. I know his doesn't really look like a top hat, but it's still kind of the same shape if you look at it shape-wise. So I just drew it the way that I felt would be kind of reminiscent of Thomas Sully's drawing, and now I'm going to cut it out. All right, so just cut along the lines. And I also don't know if you noticed, as I was sketching the hat, I didn't draw just one line. I kind of scribbled a line, which I don't know, I have found really helps me because it allows me to kind of see a shape. And then if I don't like it, I'm able to fix it with my scribbles. I can change the direction of the line without having to feel like I need to erase. Of course, I can always go back and erase if I really feel like I need it to be different. But that kind of helps me. Oh, and you know, it looks like I didn't quite cut this out the way that I wanted to. All right, so there I go. Yes, I think I like that quite a bit. Now, the last thing that I am going to do, and that I did in the sample, because this is called the torn hat, I am going to fold over, you can see that it's torn right there in Thomas Sully's painting. So I am going to fold over my hat just a little bit, and then I think on that fold, I am going to kind of put a cut there, just a little hole to kind of start my tear, and then I am going to very gently make a torn line there to be kind of like Thomas Sully's torn hat. All right, look at that. Okay, so there we go, I have my torn hat. My goodness, can you hear all of those trucks going by today? It is very busy outside my studio. All right, so I think that is pretty good. You know, I actually think I'm going to tear that just a little bit more. You can see there is quite a tear there in Thomas Sully's painting. My problem is getting a hold of it without wrinkling the rest of it, but I'll keep working my way through it. All right, I think I like that quite a bit. Yes, I do. Okay, so then I am going to take my glue and I am going to glue it down. Now you can see in this one, I actually didn't end up with much of his hair showing at all. Let's see, but that's okay. I think I'm just gonna go with that. I like that. I'm going to glue that. Of course, if this happens to you and you really like the hat and you really like the placement of the hat, but you want more hair to show, guess what? You can just grab a pencil and make it so. All right, so I am gluing this down just a little bit. There we go. And then comes the final part of coloring in the rest of the face. So I have a blue here that I think I'm going to use for uh, this boy's eyes. So I'm just going to color in, and you know what? You can actually color the whole entire eye. You can color right over the pupil, and then you can take your pencil, your regular pencil, or a black colored pencil, 
and you can go in over the pupil and you can darken that. That makes it a little easier to color if you can just kind of color in a straight line more so. So I'm going to do the same on this one and again coloring the same way makes um, your coloring look a little bit more finished. So if you start going up and down, see if you can color the whole thing up and down. Or if you start going sideways, see if you can color the whole thing sideways. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to take a brown and I am going to put in some of the eyebrow features. So I'm just going to kind of scribble these in. I mean, there's obviously a shape there, but you see, just like when I was drawing the outline of this hat, I am not just drawing lines, I'm kind of drawing bunches of lines. That seems to kind of give better shape, at least for me. And then I am going to color in his mouth. So I just, I have a red here and I am just going to color this in. The really cool thing, the reason that I love coloring with colored pencils is because they don't give a solid color at the end, which I think allows for a more natural look. You know, if you look at your lips in a mirror, you will see that they are not all the same color. That is one of the great things about art, as you learn about art, is that even though we see things as shapes, solid shapes and solid colors, they actually aren't. If you break them down, as you draw and color them, you will find that there is much more variety and variation than we initially think. I have a little bit of pink here. I'm going to just add a little bit of pink here in his lips too. And you can work on this all day. You can color this however you want. You can change it up. I would love to see your finished boys with torn hats or girls with torn hats or boys or girls with non-torn hats. If you have, um, if you have a grown-up take a picture, they can post those on our Facebook site. I can't wait to see what you are coming up with, and I can't wait to see your great portraits with the knowledge that our eyes are in the middle of our heads. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and learning about portraits and learning about Thomas Sully. I hope that you have had as much fun as I have. I'm hopeful that I will see you on Wednesday. We have another fun, fun Wanderlust Wednesday lesson planned. I would love to travel with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for kidding around with me. I will see you next time. Bye.